Hello and welcome to the book show on Diversity TV. I'm Ava Colopy, a writer of fiction, nonfiction, and poetry. My Facebook and website are Ava Colopy Books. These days I'm in rural Arkansas in the United States. I'm out in the woods, why not? And I want to talk about this book which I got out of the Horseshoe Bend Library. Lost in Shangri-La, a true story of survival, adventure, and the most incredible rescue mission of World War II by Mitchell Zuckoff. So this is a great real-life adventure story, and it just rolls. The author doesn't let it lag even when he's giving you necessary information and background on what's going to happen in the story. And one of the best things about actually a lot of male writers versus female writers, honestly, is that they often just... Uh, they go with the action, they get to the point, they don't have a lot of extra words or, you know, one or two extra pages going on and on about how they think and feel about something before something actually happens. So I prefer the kind of writing like this where it tells a lot of information but you get to the point and there isn't a lot of unnecessary verbiage put in, but you're not lost because it does give you all the information you need. But this book also lends itself naturally to my own view that women's history is not a separate subject and should not be taught as a separate subject. It is a part of the whole of history, of human history. So the author talks about the women army volunteers in World War II. Of course, women were always involved in wars, doing things like being nurses, helping with bloody horrific things like amputations. So women were always involved, but women took on more of an active role in the military in World War II. And they did non-traditional roles like being pilots and so forth, and later people tried to, certain men, not all men, but certain men tried to write that out of history, but that is a part of the whole of the history of World War II. But the women he's talking about mostly took on clerical office jobs to free up more men for combat, but that's besides the point. The point is they're part of the history and they contributed, and if they hadn't done that, those men would not have been freed up for the combat. It's a part of the whole story of World War II. It's not women's history like that's a separate subject. It's a part of human history. And they made a huge contribution. So to give you a sense of this book, I will read the author's note from the front of the book to tell you more about it and, and to really show you the context. Near the end of World War II, a U.S. Army plane flying over the island of New Guinea crashed in an uncharted region inhabited by a prehistoric tribe. In the weeks that followed, reporters raced to cover a tale of survival, loss, anthropology, discovery, heroism, friendship, and near-impossible rescue mission. Their stories featured a beautiful headstrong corporal and a strapping hellbent paratrooper stranded amid bone-through-the-nose tribesmen reputed to be headhunters and cannibals. They told of a brave lieutenant grieving the death of his twin brother, a rye sergeant with a terrible head wound, and a team of Filipino-American soldiers who volunteered to confront the natives despite knowing they'd be outnumbered more than a thousand to one. The headstrong corporal, by the way, is a woman. Rounding out the true life cast were a rogue filmmaker who'd left Hollywood after being exposed as a jewel thief, a smart aleck pilot who flew best when his plane had no engine, and a cowboy colonel whose rescue plan seemed designed to increase the death toll. Front pages blazed with headlines about the crash and its aftermath. Radio shows breathlessly reported every development en route to an astonishing conclusion. But the world was on the brink of the atomic age, and the story of life and death in the Stone Age was soon eclipsed. In time, it was forgotten. I came across an article about the crash years ago while searching newspaper archives for something else entirely. I set it aside and found what I thought I was looking for, but the story nagged at me. I began doing what reporters call collecting string, gathering pieces of information wherever possible to see if they might tie together. News reports and official documents can talk about the past, but they can't carry on a conversation. I dreamed of finding someone who'd been there, someone who could describe the people, places, and events firsthand. More than six decades after the crash, I located the sole surviving American participant, living quietly on the Oregon coast with vivid memories and an extraordinary story. That discovery and the interviews that followed led to an explosion of string that wove itself into a tapestry. Among the most valuable items was a daily journal kept during the weeks between the crash and the rescue attempt. A lengthy diary surfaced, along with a trove of priceless photographs. Three private scrapbooks followed close behind, along with boxes of declassified U.S. Army documents, affidavits, maps, personnel records, military bulletins, letters, and ground air radio transcripts. Relatives of more than a dozen other participants supplied more documents, photos, letters, and details. 
Perhaps most remarkably, the trail led to several thousand feet of original film footage of the events as they unfolded. Next came a trip to New Guinea to learn what had become of the place and the natives to find old men and women who'd witnessed the crash as children and to hike to the top of a mountain where pieces of the plane still rest along with the bones and belongings of some of those who died there. As I write this, on my desk sits a melted piece of metal from the plane that resembles a gnarled human form, the tangible reminder that, as incredible as this story seems, every word of it is true. So I don't want to spoil it by giving away what happens in it, but it is definitely worth reading. It is an adventure from real life. So, thank you for watching the book show on Diversity TV, and we will see you next time. about the book show and all our other wonderful programs, please visit our website at diversitytvireland.com. Disinformation is spreading alongside the new coronavirus. To counter this, it is important to share information that comes from reliable sources, such as health authorities and the World Health Organization. During the COVID-19 outbreak, only trust official information sources and credible media outlets. Do not share unverified information. This is a message from UNESCO.